The Assassin's Creed series is going stronger than ever. The last main game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, apparently is the highest grossing Assassin's Creed game to date by a large margin. The series has ballooned into an absolute monolith. Big, best-selling, massive open world action adventures. But of course, as many of you know, there was a whole different world of Assassin's Creed games before this massive shift. From the humble beginnings of Altair to the mega hit that was Ezio's Adventures, for years, the Assassin's Creed series hopped around from time period to time period, experimenting with different variations on Assassin's gameplay, until it eventually shifted completely with Assassin's Creed Origins into a big open world RPG series. But there was one last game that held the line before the big evolution. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, one last game that kept the classic stabbies and stealth gameplay we initially loved the series for, and it's the one that people never give enough credit for trying to hold that line, give us one last good classic Assassin's Creed title. I call it the last gasp of Assassin's Creed gameplay. Uh, now, is it the best Assassin's Creed? No, I definitely don't think so, but it is deserving of love. Even if it wasn't perfect, it's worth remembering. Now, released in the fall of 2015, the game has you playing as Jacob and Evie Fry, a brother and sister pair living in industrialized Victorian London in 1868. The duo definitely come off like rough around the edges street kids, but they were also raised and trained as assassins. They find their hometown completely under Templar control and jump in to take it back and really ultimately find the Shroud of Eden in a plot full of Templar conspiracy, crime, real world historical figures stopping by and, of course, some sci-fi time hopping. Now, this was the first Assassin's Creed game that let you swap between characters, often during missions, and it was a fairly cool mechanic. Jacob is a bit more of a brawler, where Evie is a bit more stealth focused, and each have little advantages here and there, but still they're really flexible to do pretty much whatever with whichever character. Combat is pretty button mashy, you know, you're overwhelming enemies with attacks and stabs, but you're also dodging and countering in a kind of slight Arkham style. It's okay, you know, but it's cool that it's mostly based on fists and knives and stuff. No massive swords or anything. Also, there are guns, and you can shoot and dish it out, but also have to worry about dodging incoming fire, too. In this, there's still small elements of social stealth, just, uh, you know, walking around the streets and avoiding certain folks, but there's also a dedicated stealth button where your character crouches down and puts their hood up. Basically, it's like they become an assassin Assassin's Creed person with a button press. Revolutionary at the time, because before that, every character, besides Edward at least, uh, just wore their hood all the time, just straight up kind of looking suspicious. Now, the stealth is simplistic, you know, with the easily fooled enemy AI, but having that crouch button from Unity definitely helps. Still, the sneaking and stabbing and punching was still satisfying, especially with the fact that, like Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, you could roll with some homies, or, or really, uh, gang members in this world from the Rook gang, because you're you're engaging in organized street crime. So they can fight with you in street fights and it all can become very cool kind of Gangs of New York style stuff. You start off kind of as lowly street urchins and, and basically work your way up the ladder becoming badass, not only cool assassin people, but also criminal gang leaders. And the game goes even crazier with some time hopping, occasionally thrusting you into London during World War One, making the game even more modern than we've ever seen. You're, you're a relative of the fries and you're you're working with Winston Churchill, it's wild. And your base of operations hideout is really impressive and creative too. It's on a moving train, like out in the open world. You just head to it and then it's your mobile assassin hideout. Henry Green, your assassin mentor, helps set it up and it's just really sweet looking. This is where you track assassination targets and keep track of the Rook Gang stuff and manage equipment. Then when you're done, you can just hop right off of it and engage immediately with the open world. I don't think we've seen this in many games and it's still really impressive. And oh my God, the, the city itself, let, let's talk about the setting. Syndicate takes place in an insanely big, detailed and almost modern game world. Like I said, in the late 1860s, and it has all the stuff a world coming out of the industrial revolution, you know, you would expect. Soaring buildings with multiple stories, factories working nonstop, a bustling main river crowded with boat traffic, shipping goods everywhere, accurately representing London, England as the powerhouse of the world as it was in this period of time. 
time. Not only that, the streets were wide and filled with not only detail on the sides of the streets, but bustling horse and carriage traffic. Something that just seems really complicated to implement into a game like this. You got people coming and going on the streets and bridges and carriages of all shapes and sizes and purpose. It all just makes it feel so alive up to the rooftops with just thousands of chimneys with smoke spewing out of it. Not only that, there's also trains just persistently cruising by through the whole map. It's a big, wide, polluted city with rich political districts, working class districts, factory zones, deeply poor districts and that all just feel convincingly real. And not only like lived in, but like really lived in. It feels like an old city bursting at the seams and really helps you get immersed. Even if it's not as completely like one-to-one -one immersive as say The Witcher or your favorite RPG Deep World, it still really sells a unique world that we just don't see in this type of genre like at all. This to me is one of the best parts of the game. You know, the detail still to this day is pretty stunning. They bust their ass at making detailed worlds. I mean, I mean, Paris was pretty impressive with Unity, but this takes it to another level. It's massive and dense, but not like staggeringly huge like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. There's not as much wasted space. This London is of course, you know, still filled with that typical Ubisoft bloat. It's a map filled with busy work, distractions, and tons of things to collect and areas and hideouts to conquer. But when you're actually just in it, walking around, it's really nothing short of video game magic. From the sights and sounds, the visuals, the lighting, the detail that I mentioned early, all of it. Plus, it is pretty brilliant how they made you still be able to get around quickly despite all of the modern, much taller buildings. They solved that problem with a grappling hook zipline thingy. It really is the perfect solution to like still get you on those rooftops quickly and still make the game feel Assassin's Creed-ish, you know? Like, I mean, it, like if you're not running around and parkouring on rooftops, then it's not Assassin's Creed to me. And they solve that problem. Giant wide streets for carriages? How are you gonna get across the street when you're on the roof? Well, that's where the zip line comes in. On the ground floor, staring up at a massive, massive building, well, with the press of a button, Batman style, your grappling hook and you zip right up it. Pretty smart solutions. Not to mention, like we said earlier, it's super ambitious how they added a whole vehicle system of carriages. Like that had to have been daunting to implement. Crowded city streets and carriages navigating through them, but also keeping the gameplay fun and fast and exciting. Horse and carriage, buggy, whatever you want to call it, always seems like it would be really boring in a game, but they made it pretty thrilling. Now the results are often goofy and a little bit floaty, but still totally works and some of the chases were really good maybe some of the best parts of the game the story was actually fairly interesting with some okay villains and stuff it also did a fairly good job of showcasing the rough edges of the time period the massive wealth disparity the fact that people were living almost in like tent cities beneath the city in the sewers the sickness running rampant at the time the fact that the game actually shows children working in factories some of the stuff is acknowledged in the story some of it is just out there in the environment for you to discover, but it kind of all just helped strengthen the story a bit. But really, the tone and exploration were the best parts, along with the gang wars. So even if the combat or stealth wasn't 100%, it was the total package that made it all come together and still feel satisfying to play. It was that classic Assassin's Creed gameplay formula that was really kind of pioneered with Assassin's Creed 2, and they made it all the way up to this point in this almost modern time period. It is really impressive how they pulled that off. And again, like I said at the start, even if it isn't maybe considered like the best Assassin's Creed game or anything, to me personally, it is still the most unique and does a really great job of just standing out. You're still doing the Assassin's Creed thing, but it just feels a little bit more special. It's kind of hard to explain. It's one that you just definitely need to kind of check out for yourself. And there are other underrated Assassin's Creed games. Believe me, uh, this isn't like the one end all be all. We can make a whole video about Assassin's Creed Rogue or any other game really. But we just wanted to take a minute and take a quick trip down memory lane. It's been a long time since we talked about Syndicate and we wanted to show it some love, especially after Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which you might love that game, but it's definitely come very far from what the series originally was. But we also wanna know in the comments, what do you think? Did you play Assassin's Creed Syndicate? Were you kind of burned from Unity and then you didn't want any more? That happened with a lot of people. This did release after Unity and at the time Assassin's Creed did have 
have a bit of a mark on it in terms of quality, but there's some interesting angles to this game. I mean, we just made a whole video about it. So uh, we want to hear what you think in the comments if you played it. If you had fun listening to us talk about a game that isn't brand new, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And also we'd appreciate it if you click the like button if you like this. Thank you very much for doing that. But hey, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.